On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Oh, no. Batman smells. Oh, no, I hated when kids uh, changed up the the traditional songs. Really? Yes. That's surprising. Oh, no, I did not like any of that. I wanted them to be pure and You're just, you wow. know, Batman sm- Big no. purist no. we got here. You're so we got Jenny, Zach, and Matt. I am a Christmas Matt. song purist. Hello. Nice to meet you, everybody. Yeah. Hello, hello. Jenny, Zach, and Matt in the house. And we've got, um, so that's interesting. What What is your favorite, uh, let's go around the horn real quick, favorite Christmas song? Oh, man. I, my, mine changes every year. I feel like I come around on something different. I'm going to be honest. The, the one that's been in the headlines this year has been in the front of my mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yes. And it's not necessarily because, well, okay. It's not worth getting into. It's yeah. a great duet. It's got a good melody. It's fine. Uh, probably <laughs> the off, off the top of my head, the off key version of uh, somebody else go. I'm stuck. I, okay. I, I panicked. I, I, do I, don't have, know. I do have a favorite one. <laughs> um, but what he's referencing is what, what's the name of that song? It's Michael Buble. Uh, what is the name Baby, of it? it's cold outside. I am referencing Baby, it's yeah. cold outside. Yeah. Right. But I mean, wasn't it done before Michael Buble? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Like, that's from like a film like in the Frank 40s. Sinatra. Okay. Yeah. So my favorite for sure is. Oh, Christmas tree, because for about a full year after Christmas, when my little brother Joey was in church and learned it, he sang that for every song. <laughs> so it was like the Loud. constant rerun, re- 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 just on repeat. We Aww. sang Oh, Christmas tree for a good year. I think he was maybe, at what age would that, maybe like four. It's a good yeah. tune. <laughs> so yeah. every time everyone else was like you know uh, singing like amen like all slow and yeah. he was like oh christmas tree oh christmas tree uh, the, uh so that's a fave the the minor key version michael buble's minor key version of all i want for christmas is you because it's just different enough from the original that i'm like okay like it's in minor it's different but it's the same thing i know like it's an evolution of something i've heard a million times well so. and you know that one's controversial too wait is it really that one's controversial oh, no. because it's oh no controversial. let me <laughs> no, throw it out here like, that's what just, you don't want to hear why <laughs> let me tell you why oh no because the idea the, the reason it's controversial is because they're saying ladies should want more than just a man yeah, but. or you know, not just a man. Then that's demeaning to men. So the way I said I that was bad too. Um, but it's like, oh, you should want more in your life. I'm not that rapid. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. That's that, like, so. All a woman can ever hope for yeah. is a man. Well, let's let Matt <laughs> give his this. favorite yeah. song. Um, I, I'll say I'll, I'll pick two. So my favorite religious one is "Hark the Herald Angels Sing." I really yeah. like that Classic. one. Classic. Yeah. yeah. My favorite secular one is probably um, "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." Those oh are yeah, my two yeah favorites. very close. I'd, I'd have yeah. to say that mine is Jingle Bells, just because it was like <laughs> as a kid that you could do the Jingle Bells, your Batman smells, oh, and sure. all that. Like I thought it was always so funny. Yeah, yeah. and so to clearly, make up as yeah. many hilarious parts of it as possible. There are people in that room that disagree with you <laughs> on how I'm, funny that is. Yeah, it's a good, absolutely. it's a good something. Yeah, but if there was so a way bad. to make a wave that wasn't the the right way, I I attempted yeah. it as a kid. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of speaking of some really smart decisions and things as well. Our first headline is pretty great. Yes. Uh, California has a plan to tax text messages. Uh, A new surcharge proposed by the California Public Utilities Commission wouldn't be a per-text tax, but a monthly fee based on a cellular bill that includes any fees for text messaging services. Most carriers offer a flat fee option for texting and already charge a similar fee for other services included in the bill. Uh, The exact structure of this charge would vary from carrier to carrier. This gets into ATT and Sprint and T-Mobile, so we won't go into the details, but for what it's worth, California is looking to just tax on additional tax if you're texting um so, Heath, what do you think well and just a, a follow-up to that um that it was actually also a bill got passed to where that can't happen now it right was pulled the fcc from the ballot. is not yeah, allowing the, it to happen yeah, but FCC. for discussion's sake we bring yes. it up so for d- discussion's sake that that's exactly correct jenny that that was even though that came out it's still 
hit me when I saw it. And not to get into too much of all the politics stuff is, um, but the number one, the state that lost the most amount of businesses last year uh-huh. were California. <laughs> like most businesses, and they are it, the highest rate of people leaving uh-huh. is California. You're proposing that's relevant. Well, it's very <laughs> relevant because as a general, like California has more taxes and more kinds of taxes than any other state. Oh, so it's brutal. obviously people are just getting tired of mm-hmm. the high cost of living on top of the taxes and everything and so um when you know we got jenny that's watching youtube oh. videos over <laughs> yeah. the podcast. i actually Goodness. had the cns and cnn business story of, about that sorry shout that's out to I, cnn with the auto playing <laughs> that's, that's no. what i'd say Oof. too all right um <laughs> or fox i'm not trying to be partisan <laughs> you know what, what 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 i thought about in this was when you're building let's just say you're you're in a business say you're middle management or say you're building a business say you're working around people or anything yeah there are times that you've got to shift, um, you know, directions. You've got to evolve, and if you don't, you're going to die. Whether it's you know, you're a middle manager and running a small team, you've got to shift things, right? Yeah. And when you're doing that, you always have to weigh out a lot of options. So you know, for instance, um, when Apple, okay, when oh, Apple, Apple had the iPod, yeah. right, it was huge. Sure. When they come out with the iPhone, they basically put their product out of business. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a okay. good point. They, uh, yeah. they, they, they replaced their own iPod with a phone, okay? Right. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing is, so when you're trying to replace a culture or trying to change a boat of things, you've got to make sure and pay attention to what the base is because sometimes if you try to shift too much and you forget about the base of people there, maybe, you know, Apple made that switch and could do it because they had so many other products that it wasn't going to kill them to where they'd go bankrupt before the iPhone picked up, right? Sure. So sometimes people will make a move in an evolution and they keep going one way even though their baseline is being gone. Right. And they're not able to hang on to it. So you've got to calculate out your moves whenever you're trying to change maybe a culture, you're trying to change a direction, or you're doing all of that. You've got to weigh out both because California, for instance... If they keep up with all the taxing, right. they're going to have nobody else to tax, and, and it could get you in trouble. But outside of that, thinking about whether it's your coworkers, middle management, business, or anything, when you're evolving, you have to make sure and really calculate. You can't just move 360 degrees from one to another right overnight and lose your base foundation versus your Ford. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's certainly a balance of momentum. Uh, to pick up on your Apple uh, analogy, like the iPhone wouldn't have been possible without the success of the iPod. Correct. You keep that ball rolling, and then you get behind it and push more. I get that. But you're right. Like It's very easy to get swept up in your own snowball, and before you know it, you're somewhere you never wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and California might be going that way a little bit. You, you're, you're presenting some solid evidence to You the also look here. at Kodak, who didn't evolve to oh, the sure. digital camera, and yeah. they're, they're basically out of business. You you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I took a kind of a family friend perspective mm-hmm. from this one. When I, I read this article, I started thinking about, okay, so yeah, so they're taxing, so they're pulling from their resources, right? They have their people, they're proud, you know, California girls, and all these people are really yeah. proud to be Californians, they're right? Yeah, they're undeniable, <laughs> you know. I've heard that horrible <laughs> reference. <laughs> I enjoy it very much. Thank you. Um, and so, but they're, you know, they're, so, so these people have all the, the amazing things that California has to enjoy. So yeah. they have the water, they have the great weather, they have the option to swim and ski, you know, within oh, sure. a few hours. Um, it's just beautiful. But they're getting pulled from and pulled from and pulled from with regard to the taxes and the high cost of living. Okay, so now we flip that. Look at how that is with your family uh, or your friends. Is there the friend who's always like, hey, would you mind picking this up for me? Hey, yeah. um, can you spot me 20 Ooh. bucks? Oh, um, slippery slope. You know, oh, uh, hey, so I know that you're going to be in this area, and would you mind picking my child up when you pick your child up and bring it back? But yet they're never offering to, like, say, reimburse you or say, hey, you know what? You've hosted Christmas every year. Let me host Christmas. Or you've been picking my child up. Let me help out with yours. Or you ran the errand for me. Let me do that for you. Or even just, like giving them the appreciation. It's almost like California is doing this thing where they're not appreciating their people who are there. California always buys a cigarette but never or always bums a cigarette but never buys a pack. Yes. Oh, yes. I blew my analogy. No, but, uh, but it's that's true. Good. That's yeah, and you can you. only live off your, your beauty for so long. Yeah, yeah. And the that's same true. goes in real life. That's true. I people like living off their beauty. Yeah. I like that look. At, I think that's a Thanks, great babe. second shot, yeah, actually. I agree. Um, because sooner or later you're going to get to the end of this road and realize 
all, you know, all my friends are gone or hey, my, my family's not having that same loyalty they once had to me. Well, maybe you are sucking them dry I was about you know, to say, emotionally yeah. or something like Don't that. Don't you got to look at it yourself and think, do, are people like, are you that person? Like, mm-hmm. like, oh my God, am I that person that really keeps taking that cigarette and never bring, you know, to, in, to, to use that analogy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, in general, that's the thing is it, it's not that one thing you did a long time ago can only last for so long. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and, and you know, Jenny, you know me, like my one of my big, I don't like to get anything for free. Right. I don't, I, I hate really? getting stuff for free. Mm. I do not want you to give me anything for free. I, if I have a friend that has a service or something, I want to use them and pay them as a business transaction. I don't want a deal. I don't want. Because you always end up owing well, them in and, a different and, way. Well, mm. and, and you never know. And I don't like owing anybody anything. Yeah. Um. And then when it's done in that way, then you don't even know what you owe really. Like, right. Like, like somebody goes, oh, um. I'll do this for you, and you can just tip me. Well, how much do I tip you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to use that on. And, and if I don't give you enough, are you going to be like, oh, I gave them free service, and they only tip me, whatever, right? And then you over tip, and you end up paying more than you would just for a regular person. So it's right. like, I like the, I like it to be very clear. Mm-hmm. I want to use you because you're my friend. I think you do something good. Charge me for your service. I don't need, I don't want to feel like this is a, because I'm not trying to take. I, I, I think you're good. I want to use you. Sure. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, those people. They're definitely those people that continue to draw from their uh, arrow stack, and they're not refilling it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they're drawing from those relationships, and that when we all have those friends that we know we can count on. And there's got to be a difference between friends you know you can count on because you have a a, a tight back and forth relationship, and the friends who are just you know it's one it, way. You know it's one way, and you're you, you're the offender. And, and so, so don't be California in your friendships or your family. <laughs> and so when you think about it and, and kind of su- and summing it all up is like in, in business, when, if you're trying to make any kind of moves or changes, make sure that you don't do so much that whatever your your base is, you got to keep your if you have to keep your base long enough to survive the new, don't totally, you know, wipe it out and, and, and put yourself in a tough situation. Maybe look at maybe is there one, two, three little small steps to making that change that can kind of keep the backflow if that's what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And also understanding your personal relationships that if you are that person that is the one-way street, take a look at yourself right now and change that and make that realization. And number two, if you've got too many friends that are one way, maybe it's time to make some of those changes so it's not just drawing from you constantly over and over and over. So um, we'll be back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shop. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Heath Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. So because I'm pretty positive that we don't have anybody listening to this podcast that still believes in Santa, I'm pretty positive that everybody's got to be of age of some sort. Mm. Well, some people listen in the cars, but if so, then maybe fast forward a minute. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> With the kiddos in the car. <laughs> but I'm most excited this Christmas about getting to be Santa. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, that's so freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the first the bad year. Part, it's going to sure. be that she totally does not understand yet well no oh she's gonna understand <laughs> but these are these are the practice years this yeah. is when you really get she's down true. to routine she's gonna yeah. get it uh, she's gonna get like enough that she's gonna see a couple cool new toys and stuff she's never seen and it's gonna and be she's fun gonna to be watch excited mm-hmm. i'm curious to hear from all of you do you uh like growing up did you wrap santa gifts or were they set out and also were the bigger gifts from santa or were the bigger gifts from family yeah well, and go to the second shot yeah. facebook group and post that after this and tell us what yeah. your what your uh, deal was facebook.com because this group gets really controversial shot. in some families believe it or what not what did you have we had santa gifts were unwrapped okay family gifts were wrapped yep and i would say 
uh, now I'm thinking it was more of a logistics thing, um, but that Santa's gifts were usually the bigger gifts yeah. because they're harder to wrap. So they're like, oh, that's from Santa. Uh -huh. Maybe they didn't want to wrap it. Like um, the bicycle would but, be from Santa. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. With just like a bow on it or just so kind of sitting out or something it, like that. He's already got a lot of gifts on the sleigh. All right. Wrapping paper is a whole other beast. Yeah. yeah. And we never did. Right. We didn't yeah. do big Christmases. Our Christmases were very modest, but yeah. very special. Uh -huh. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were very. And I, I, I truly believe in modest, special Christmases. So you can get like those couple things and excess you have. You can maybe... Yeah, the best ones are, I think. Due to, you know, help uh, others out. That's funny because you know, mine was exactly the same as yours. Yeah. Oh, was it? Identical. Oh, I guess we'll yep. be okay then. It's, 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 we have no controversy <laughs> in our household of figuring out how to do Super Christmas easy. because we it's have literally other identical. Oh, yeah. And look, Zach forgot to start the no! clock. Oh! And he literally started today I, going, there's oh. no way Get I'm going zeros. to miss. Stop But you know what, Zach? You're is. more than a clock right. starter. Thank you. No, no, that means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. Our second headline uh, from defendant to top prosecutor. This tattooed Texas district attorney represents a new wave in criminal justice reform. This is uh, telling the story of Mark Gonzalez. And this is pretty old, right? Yeah, this actually came out in November. So this yeah. has been a minute, but it doesn't make him not a yeah, district yeah. attorney. So for what it's right, worth. Right. The story is still relevant. Yes. For sure. uh, he's a newly elected district attorney of Nueces County, uh, and he, he's a... A Hispanic man, lots of tattoos, and he's doing his thing. He, he's, he's, uh, well, I should just kind of get into this. The improbable ascent of the self styled bike, Mexican biker lawyer to a top law enforcement job two years ago speaks to the profound change sweeping dozens of local prosecutors' offices across the country. In a field that is 95% white and overwhelmingly male, many are minorities, women, or gays, and hail from unlikely backgrounds such as civil rights work or the public defender's office. The new breed of prosecutors is upending a traditional tough-on-crime focus by emphasizing a holistic approach over conviction rates and long sentences. Could a man who had never prosecuted a case in his life transform justice in a state synonymous with an uncompromising approach to law and order? And it digs into some more DAs, and it's actually a, 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 like an eight-page article, but just to sum it up, that's the question. That's what's posed, is we have a lot of people who are coming in new, fresh blood, coming from a different background into a system that is already pretty old. What's it all for? Well, something that you just said is really my second shot on it in general. Mm. If you ever feel stagnant in work and or personal, having doing something different and in, 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 in like infusing yourself with fresh faces, fresh people, fresh whatever can really skyrocket things. So if you have um, a business and y'all are, you know, sky, y'all are stagnant, you're going down, you whatever – Honestly, it may be time to bring in some new blood, as we call it. Bring in new people because new people have fresh faces, fresh outlooks, fresh things. Mm -hmm. If you don't make some of those, and like in your personal life, if you're if you're in this like habit that that is not making you happy, you're kind of doing the same routine that there's there's nothing new kind of with it. Then you've got to go pick out a couple different things to get involved in to meet new people, to have some maybe new friends that maybe bring new ideas and maybe push you in new ways because the old ways is not getting you to that next step because you have to continue to evolve i believe you truly completely evolve as a person every 10 years and so maybe there's those times you've got to go i've got to get out of the same routine so i can meet different kinds of people if you keep going i'm meeting the same kind of people go somewhere else mm -hmm. and meet new people and to bring new blood in if you work if you're stagnant you got to maybe make some tough changes and bring in new blood to be able to get the spark up of a new way so kind of get outside of your bubble so yes. to speak. So so when I heard the story, sort of my second shot on this was maybe from an employee's perspective. And sometimes what we do when we're growing up and, you know, you have like a career fair at school or sure. somebody says, what do you want to be? And, and you do kind of look to who you know and people who may look like you. You think, oh, well, I don't know. What do my parents' friends do? They do this. Or what, what, what do yeah, um, your, your sphere my parents of influence. do? Your sphere of influence yeah, yeah, can yeah. be very small. But thankfully, because of the internet and because of social media, you, you certainly can find inspiration from someone who is like you. And I'm not saying it's just, you know, the, the, the uh, attorney here was, you know, they described him as, I think, tattooed mexican you know that was his biker in biker sure. you know that was sort of like mexican biker his lawyer. heritage but also his exterior mm. and things like that yeah so if you're kind of like thinking oh you know i've always wanted to do this type of job but i don't see anybody who looks like me or who was raised like me in that field that's okay look at this guy he's killing it everybody can you blaze know. a trail 
Mm. Yes, and how cool to be that person and to be so impressive in that field. And then you're always going to be surrounded by different people and from different spheres of influence. Yeah. So it's kind of exciting to really think about the idea of, hey, I don't see anybody who, who seems like me in my background. Well, why don't I try it? Or if you're somebody who needs a little bit of a push, you certainly can go online now and find that kind of inspiration. You know, say you're thinking, okay, you know, all of, I want to be a, a makeup artist, but it seems like all the makeup artists in my area are like this type of person. You go on Instagram, there's a bazillion different types of makeup artists who different do different types uh, of makeup. Sometimes they do it specifically for an Indian wedding, which is a certain type of look. Some people do more of a natural look. So, I mean, that's not going to resonate with all of our listeners, but just from a very um, sort of like entry level point, I think it's important to to either see yourself in a different realm or go out there and find those people who may be like you and let them serve as um, just sort of a mentor. But you have to go make an effort to meet different types of people and cultures. That's the thing that people don't understand, and especially in today's world, a lot of corporate stuff try to fit round, round pegs into square holes of diversity, right? They'll, they'll say, oh, we're going to be diverse, and, and they just hire diverse people just because instead of them being qualified or not or, or vice versa. You've got to hire the right people that have an open mind. There are people that do things in many different cultures, and they will attract the right types of people for things. And you, So you've got to go make an effort. That That's... That's what I don't understand with people. Sometimes they go, well, um, I, I just don't have this certain culture around or something. No, you, you're just doing the same thing. Go make Here, it. You've got to go yeah. make an effort. Here's, here's a problem that uh, companies are doing, and you maybe are even doing it in your own life, is they say they make this decision all of a sudden to, quote, be diverse. But they're not living that way in their own lives, so they don't know these people to they go have find. No clue. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so when your your hiring pool is, you know, you look around who you surround yourself with. Are they only the people in your uh, neighborhood, income level, only your religion, only your race, only your age? Well, that's going to be a problem if you're in the hiring arena, because those are going to be the only people you want to find. And then you say, I want to find quote diverse. Well, what does that even mean? Yeah. Well, and and, and here's the thing. So so here's something people would say. Well, why do I need to be diverse? Why does it matter? Let me tell you right. this. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I grew. I like I love where I'm from. I am very grateful for where I was raised because my roots are strong and it was a great time for me as a kid. I loved it. I have nothing but pure joy to look back on. But I can tell you this, when I moved away from there and I've moved in different I've been lived in different parts of the country and been now open to many different cultures and traveling to stuff. I have grew and learned tremendously. Like the amount of Grown. knowledge. You're still using your language from there, though. I, I, that's why you know when you marry a journalist for a wife. I thought that, about that, saying uh, something, but I was no, I'm not gonna. No, but it's you, good. I'm Grown still that, always that, that, fulfilling the role of Chad, and I know Chad would yeah. have that. Chad out. would appreciate yeah. that. So <laughs> Chad would appreciate that's true. But when I think about it, I go, you, I, I can't tell you. You don't know the limits that you can achieve once you get outside of your bubble and learn about other things. Look, I've learned about d tons of cultures, tons mm -hmm. of everything. Do, does it mean that I agree with all of them and I like all of them? It's it's not that I agree with all. I, I don't agree with all of them. I don't have all. But you know what? I respect it, and I have learned a tremendous amount. from. I've taken things from a lot of stuff. So, you know, when I look at it and think about it, it's like when, when people talk about why to be, you know, everybody talks about diversity, and sometimes there's people sitting around going, why do I want to be diverse? Let me tell you, when you learn all different cultures, different walks of life, and you put yourself in other shoes, I think it's critical to put your kids in all kinds of different um, spots that are learning different things because you – not and I'm not telling you that you have to agree with their lifestyles. I don't think that you have to agree with all of that. But what I can tell you is, is you're going to learn. There are going to be things and ways that people do things that will help you in your personal life, your business life, because they look at stuff in a completely different way. And it's a tremendous thing, I think, to teach your kids um, of the other cultures to respect them to to be involved in them because they're going to learn tremendously as well. So um, we'll be back on the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. 
You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people, and I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Go pick it up today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. So we had a fun little contest this week. Yes. If you're not in the Second Shot Facebook group, you don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. But you can join. Yeah. You're go, invited. Go look up Second Love Shot it. at Facebook groups and join it. And um, also know that um, secondshotcast at gmail.com, anything you would like to email us, talk to us about, anything like that, mm-hmm. then you can you can uh, shoot it there at secondshotcast at gmail. Dot com and also shaming you if you have not left a review to please leave us a rating or review and and the other thing look if you like this a lot it's really easy to click those three little dots next to it and share it on your social media I mean if you can share it on your social media and let people know what you think about it mm-hmm. then others will see it and maybe you know go on and start becoming a fan of, of the second shot as well and if you find joy out of it and find it useful obviously you do or you wouldn't keep listening to to us over and over share it with your friends <laughs> i will also say my offer still stands if you tag me i will repost you so if you have a business or something cool to share or even just you're trying to get followers on your personal profile i will totally re um like post you in the instagram stories or yeah. you know whatever the case may be take that one up there's some clout there she's got a lot of followers it's totally I mean, worth your time yeah just, just saying. saying yeah <laughs> kind of a big deal people so, know me so this uh, this hot giveaway so we had a giveaway. Yeah. And it was only 20. eligible for people inside the group. You want, I want you to kind of explain the giveaway. Sorry, it was all, no, it was, I was interrupting. No, because it was all your <laughs> okay, idea. Okay, this was my idea. Yeah. Well, because people have been saying, you've got to get the shop up, the store up. And we, I did figure out a shop for Second Shot Gear. However, we wanted to order the stuff first and buy it ourselves before we tell people about it. Because I don't want you guys yeah, paying yeah. 15, 20 bucks for a shirt and, uh, and, and then having good. it show up like off center or something. Because I could sure. see me doing that. Because technology is not really my forte. Um, also, if there's anybody who wants to make the store themselves, please let me know. I'd be happy to um, do that with you. But I figured before the holidays, let's do a fun second shot giveaway. So some people are getting a shirt. Some people are getting a hat. The hats are very cool. I love the shirt, too. It's, like, super soft. And I actually wear mine all the time. Yeah. And so she did a deal 24 hours. If you posted it and shared a podcast episode on your uh, any social media and, and told them told your friends to go listen or whatever if you took a screenshot and emailed it to secondshotcast at gmail.com you'd be put into the drawing and stuff to uh, be one of the three people to win some second shot gear so we have the um, for, we have the three people that have won. Yes. yes. Here they are. We picked three winners. Okay. So first of all, Bailey. Shout out to Bailey, who we Ooh. actually know. So that was fun well, that she entered she, and posted. She's my cousin, so <laughs> kind of know her a little bit. No yeah, nepotism. Everyone in East Texas chance. is yeah. his cousin. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, one from... Or, or a, one of the winner I, is... Can we say who that is? Yeah. I, know, I know who that person well, is. Jeffrey... It's Jeff Rolla. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Jeff oh, Rolla. I know Jeff from the group. Yeah, yeah. Jeff is awesome. The man with all and the And we have one more winner, Julian. Do I say? Do I say last name? Well, yeah, well, not. Yeah, because he Jeff. shut it off. It's, he, oh, he took oh, a yeah. screenshot. You guys, I know I'm so, I'm so like... Um, courteous about people's privacy yeah. or just oh, sensitive sure. about it yeah. um but anyway thank you guys for the sweet generous post that you made online and so if you didn't win this time we will do another giveaway coming up whenever i figure out the ordering of shirts situation it'll be good and we will have these um we'll be getting with you three on if you want shirt hat and whatnot and ask when you get it and you wear it, take a picture of it, post it in the group or post it on your social media and tag us in it so we can see it as well. See so you yeah. looking so good in wear, your second shot gear. Wear it out to the state fair next year or something. Come on, do <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Wear it with next, big next, tags. Yeah, yeah. Take, take it on Instagram. Tag, tag Jenny. Since this is the episode right before Christmas, um, I thought it would be cool if all of us could maybe, if we, you know, if anything kind of pop in your mind about Christmas, whether it's, you know, maybe it's your family traditions or just a Christmas memory you have that is kind of fun and, and whatnot to share with everybody, you know, love. Um, and, and 
I'll, I'll kind of start it off because I had something pop in my mind earlier. It's yeah. so funny when we were talking about favorite um, Christmas songs and stuff. Um, so in case for everybody who doesn't know, I literally cannot carry a tune in a bucket. I am as tone deaf <laughs> as it can absolutely 100% hey, be. I heard that jingle bells at the top of the show. Don't yeah. sell yourself short here. <laughs> I have always been. Yeah. However, when I was a kid, I thought, I mean, I wanted to sing so bad. I wanted to be at the front of the church doing whatever it was to sing. And and my parents did a very smart thing and had that real talk when I was like nine or ten of, look, son, you can't sing. Aww. You need to know that. That's I. That's terrible. Yeah. No, it was great. <laughs> my, my dad. It was actually very great because it. I didn't pursue. I, I, I did not keep after that when I was. And I look back, realize I was really bad. Like I was really i have i wasn't even close like it wasn't like it was a kid that could that was really close that could maybe yeah. evolve one day no i was far off so <laughs> i say all that to go one time with my cousin they lived in what we called quote unquote town which was troop and it actually had like you know there was actually like neighborhoods and there was like gas sure. stations and stuff oh there. yeah yeah you go into town is there a yeah. stoplight oh yeah one okay. stoplight well, always no, flashing actually, yellow no it was just a four-way okay uh, but it was close farm to market um but it, we were at their house on Christmas Eve, and our parents would not let us have candy because obviously we had to get wound down to go to bed later right, on. Right, right, right. That makes so, sense. So we were about probably my, – my cousin Cody was a year older than me. So we were probably – I was probably 10 or 11, so he'd have been 12 or 13. Um, I was probably 10. He was probably 11, okay? So what I did, I said, oh, we're going to go play outside. I was always one who got my cousin into everything, and, and for some reason he just he went along with me is I got him outside, and I said, here's what we'll do. We're going to go knock on doors and sing Christmas carols and ask for candy in return. So we went door-to-door -door in the neighborhood and got boatloads of candy. So they would, <laughs> we would knock on the door and say, can we sing a Christmas carol for you for candy? And we would sing Jingle Bells jing or whatever. Fresh right? off Halloween. They're yeah. trying yes. to get more candy. And, Always an entrepreneur. And we did probably, you know, six, seven, eight doors. And like got us boatloads of candy, stuffed it in all of our pants, and oh, we come walking in thinking, oh, yeah, we're going back here and tear this up. And as we get in there, uh, we got told real quick because one of the neighbors called to tell Aunt Ava and them that how precious it was that their kids were singing uh, Christmas carols for candy around the neighborhood. Say a, a snitch. Yeah. Yeah, and she was not. Really, she didn't mean to, right? It was like, yeah. it was like, oh, that's so cute. And so that ended our Christmas carols. But we did. I, I, we didn't give up all the candy. We ate some of it. And he never went caroling again. <laughs> Man, but there's a Christmas story. That's a of good mine. one. Yeah. So, any, who anybody else has got a tradition or a anything that comes to mind? I wasn't thinking of me behaving badly over the holidays, but I do have a fa hey, favorite. That was goodwill. <laughs> was he was singing to families. Come yeah, on. yeah. Um, I. Well, I think if, let's see, we've got a couple of favorites. I love the advent calendar. So we would always do that every year. And my brothers and I would trade off and it would always be like a big fight at the end. Who got to read the Christmas story? Yeah. Aww. Did you guys do be yes. like, you know, would be counting it down like, okay. So it would be like, oh, Gus, why don't you start this year? Yeah. Because if Gus started that every third one, then I would end up being the Christmas, <laughs> reading nice. the Christmas and, and you story. Said, Cause you, you were the oldest. So you were probably really the, the one that could think that far. Right. Enough. Well, yeah. Joey, four years younger than me was still better at math. So he actually would be the one end up yeah you know figuring it out so that and then also we would go to all the fancy neighborhoods and look at the christmas lights and i loved doing that um just because it was like wow look gosh who's living in these houses first sure. of all yeah. and then second of all i think they must have had maybe professionals putting up their lights or something they're always like these huge grand displays so we would usually do that after church on christmas eve or maybe a couple nights before maybe so that was just fun you know everybody kind of crammed in the car and we put some cocoa in a thermos and maybe maybe we'll do, are you up for that this year babe yeah man there you go yeah and, uh, most guys are like, this does not sound like fun but no, no caroling none of that <laughs> yeah, yeah and and i'll if, if you're lucky i'll let you out and sing for candy you get some candy sweet. i do still have some halloween candy if you want to swing by the house really? <laughs> 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 donate it to the Stuff cause keeps. you know oh, we yeah. don't have any in our house <laughs> <laughs> zach matt uh, the other one y'all yeah I'll, I'll go real quick mine isn't necessarily one particular story or or, or thing. Uh, it's just kind of a, a, an overall monthly tradition for for December. Um, I, I'm a big I'm a big media consumer. I, I mm -hmm. went to school for movies and I do this and I, and I play video games and like my my family like we watched a lot of movies when we were kids, lots of Disney classics. Um, and and we were big on Christmas movies, like all the Rankin Bass specials, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Rudolph and the Frosties and the, and the, the, the Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, I, I mean, any Christmas movie, you name it, I, I've probably seen it. And you got the favorites, the Temples, Christmas Vacation, Christmas Story, 
Um, I, it's it's just getting together with my family because we still every year we watch them. We bust them out, and, and I've so got fun. I've got I've got DVDs now instead of the old VHS tapes we used to have. Do you watch a twenty four hour um, Christmas story on Christmas Eve? I don't. Oh. No, see, we never had cable back in the day, so mm. we didn't have ABC Family. Like yeah. they, they were. Well, all I'm talking about like now. Access like now, it's all there. Yeah. They do it, but it's great. I love Cord that cutters. show. I love that movie. Uh, yeah, we do watch Christmas Story and we watch Christmas Vacation, and it's 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 weird now. Like the older I get, you know, it, it, it's not weird per se, but. Every year, you have a new perspective revisiting this same thing. And in a lot of ways, that's what Christmas is, you know? And it's, it's sitting there and watching it with my dad totally. and hearing him laugh at the same damn joke every year yeah. in Christmas vacation. And I laugh because he <laughs>, laughs and my mom rolls her eyes. And it's this, like, moment when you're all together again and it's like, man, some things, you know, I get, enjoy it while it lasts, I guess. And that's kind of what Christmas is all about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love Matt, that. I thanks. like that perspective a lot. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was not necessarily a family tradition. It was more of a me tradition, but we I grew up in the same town as my grandparents. They, they lived right across town, which in mm-hmm. Springtown was like a five-minute drive. Um, and so we would have Christmas morning at my house where it was just you know my mom and dad and, and myself. And then around 9 o'clock, we'd go over to my grandparents' house, and that's when we have breakfast. And you know if my grandparents had any gifts for us, they would be there. And I was allowed to bring one thing that I really enjoyed from home, you know, that I got Christmas morning. I I'd bring it and show it to my grandparents. And looking back now, I can realize they didn't care. Like, they didn't know what any of this <laughs> stuff was. I'd bring a transformer or something, and they'd be like, oh, wow, that's cool. And, you Neat. know, my grandpa would be looking at it, and, and they, and acted, I, like they, cared. they acted like they cared. And, and so it, to me, it was the biggest, you know, that was the most fun on Christmas morning was saying, oh, this really cool thing, or, you know, my, my uh, RC car, or this pound puppy, or whatever I, I got. I'd bring it over and show it to them, and uh, they would act so they would act so enthralled by it uh, that uh, you know it, it made it all the all the more better. I think. Aww. Oh, that's sweet. That I do so love sweet. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny, and it, it's kind of amazing to look up. This will be the second Christmas we're sharing. We'd share it with our second pot check second shot listeners. You know, this is second Christmas. It's the true. Second, the, the, second the Christmas podcast. together, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, so I just want to say I'm grateful for all you guys, for everybody, and I hope that everybody has a very, very merry, merry Christmas, and you eat all kinds of bad <laughs> stuff you're not supposed to eat, <laughs> and that nobody goofs up the Santa Claus thing. Mm. Yeah, i got to ask you guys about that offline. i got questions. Yeah. So I, I want to okay. know your whole strategy. So okay. that's where, where can yeah. they find you all at? Jenny, Zach, and Matt. Jenny and Chondo TV on Twitter, on Instagram, Jenny and Chondo, Facebook, Jenny and Chondo or Jenny and which I'm updating. So it's going to be really cool. I will be at Apple Zacintosh on Twitter and Instagram. Still working on the Insta thing. I'll get it one day. And Facebook.com slash group slash second shot. Come on in. Join the conversation. Uh, you can find me Matt Stoker one on Instagram. You can see pictures of when my dog came to visit work. Uh, Adorable. Last <laughs> week. Oh. Logan, Logan he hung is out an with angel. me all day. <laughs> Ed Heatho said Ignorance on Fire, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You can find me on all of them. I love you guys. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time. Destination for premium talk radio.